Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be having a look at the fade over time node. Um, now this is something that I've covered in my Niagara course, but I've had a few questions about it. And so I just wanna go over it in a little bit more detail here uh, with this sort of worked example uh, and show you how to set it up, uh, how to use it. And then we'll also have a quick look at um, different random distributions and how that kind of ties into this and, and makes it work in a nice, interesting way. So. Uh, this is the end result we're going to go for. Um, in this case, we're randomizing a height value and we're just moving our, our mesh particle up uh, based on that. And you can see we get a very sort of uh, dynamic, interactive, not interactive, but a dynamic, um, unpredictable result. Uh, obviously, with any particle, you could just animate the height over time, but it's going to be sort of repetitive and um, visually not as interesting, say, as something like this, where uh, we want to have that sort of randomness kind of pushing this up and we're not controlling this in any way it's just random values um, which can be quite a nice thing to do so this is why you might want to use this sort of fade over time node there's lots and lots of applications but this is a sort of quite simple one that hopefully demonstrates how it works so cool so let's get started i'm going to start with a brand new empty emitter uh, empty class fade something like that uh, and I'm just going to change the renderer to a mesh renderer. Not necessary, but makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. Um, and I will rename this spheres. Let's do Shakespeare. Here we go. We're going to spawn one particle. So spawn burst set to one. Uh, we're going to turn off the particle lifetime. So kill particles when lifetime is elapsed uh, so this particle will just live forever now and because of that we also want to set the loops to once so we just have a single particle a single loop spawns a single particle particle lives forever uh, nice sort of debug setup to set this thing uh, set this thing going so first thing now i want to do in spawn is i'm going to create a uh, new parameter which is going to be of type float and i'm going to call this random z height and we're going to randomize a value between, let's see, 100 and 200 units. OK, now we have a random value. We're going to use that to set the particle height. So we're going to set position, particle position. And it's going to default here to the simulation position. We want to add that random value to it. So we'll do an add vector to position. The vector, uh, sorry, the position will be the engine owner position as it was before. And the vector, well, we only want to add to the z. So we're going to do a make vector. And now we can access just that third value. So we're going to do uh, random height, random z height. There we are. OK, uh, just crop a copy of this in the world. Uh, let's do that and that. There we are. We can see, let's just hide this one because it's distracting. We can see we're randomizing the height. It's not at zero, it's at between 100 and 200 units above. Um, but every time I re-trigger this, you can see it's um, randomizing that height value. Cool, all right. Now we need to go to particle update and we're gonna do some things in here. So if we load in our fade over time module, now there's two options for fading, either linear or uh, percentage. We'll leave it on linear for now. And what it'll do is it'll fade by this value every second. So if we've got a random value between 1 and 200, if we start fading by 1 every second, that's going to take a long time to get to 0. So we'll change this up to something like I don't know, 25. Um, so it'll take 4 seconds to go from 100 to 0. Uh, and then we're going to plug in a target value. Now this value will set the high watermark if it's above the current output value. So in this case, we're going to plug in our random z height. Oh, I could spell correctly. Random z height. Uh, and if we look at the parameter reads and writes, what this is going to write out to is a value here. So parameter uh, particles fade over time current value. So it's going to take this value and it's going to fade it down by this rate. And then if it's if it's below, it'll keep fading down to zero. Uh, or if this is above, it'll kind of push that back up again. So this is our sort of way of resetting it. And then it fades over time. And, and you can see that kind of result that we were seeing in the preview. So now we have our, our fade value. We're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to set the position 
So I just copy and paste that node and change rather than using random z height, we're going to use the fade over time current value. And it doesn't work. And why doesn't it work? Well, let's have a quick debug into what's actually happening. This makes sense to me logically. The value is being set, it's fading. This is what I want to fade. Why isn't this working? Well, let's actually have a look at some numbers. So I'm going to change this sphere to a plane. And I'm going to add my own material. And I've got a debug float material. All this is is taking a dynamic parameter um, and then plugging it through the debug scale values. This is an inbuilt um, module, an inbuilt function, uh, and lets us just see the numbers exactly as they're happening. And this is a really nice way of debugging things, I find. Okay, so if we were to add a dynamic material parameter, I want to debug a value. Let's debug the random value first. Random z height, just to make sure everything's working the way we expect. And we can see the higher the value, the higher the particle comes. So that's working. Uh, but let's debug the, the fade value as well. Fade current value. And we can see it's not fading. So what's happening? Well, the random z height value is, is randomized here. It's set. Uh, and then it's set through the fade over time. But because we're setting this target value, this is always going to be the highest point. So we're not able to fade. It's, it's sort of stuck at that at the highest value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this particle random or randomizing value here and just randomizing it again. And in this case, I'm going to randomize it every frame. And every frame I'm going to randomize in this case, let's say between 0 and 200. And you can see now it's starting to work. So the random value is being randomized once on spawn and set as a kind of like initial setup. And then we're randomizing again, in this case with a larger range. And so when the random value or the, the sort of the, the update random value is low, we get the fading coming down. But when the update value goes above the current fade value, it kind of pushes it up again. So we're getting this kind of dropping and then resetting upwards, which we can see here. And we can see the numbers kind of reflecting that as well. Pretty cool. Um, obviously, as I say, you could use this to drive anything. As long as the input value that you're plugging into your fade over time is um, is occasionally lower than your current value, so it needs to kind of like reset and then sort of spike upwards, um, and then the fade over time can kind of like have space to do that fading. And we can obviously make the fade faster, so a higher value here will will drop it quicker. Um, we can change our fade by percentage. So if we do a percentage. Let's do much smaller numbers here. It's losing 1% every every frame. So it's um, it's more of an exponential curve as opposed to a linear curve. Um, and you can play around with these values. We can also set minimum step size, uh, minimum value, all of these kind of things as well. So um, if I put that back to, to linear, to linear and 50, something like that. Cool. So that's the fade over time module. That's what it's doing. Uh, as long as the current value is lower than the fade value, or sorry, is lower than the target value, it will kind of keep reducing. Um, but if the target value is higher, it will set that back up again. And you can see it calls it a high water mark, so it's kind of setting that that value up when it needs to. Cool. So the other thing I wanted to sort of highlight here uh, is another technique we can use. Now this is just randomizing values between zero and two hundred. That's fine. Does what we want it to do here for the demonstration. Um, but we can also have a bit more control over this. Now, I don't want this to just keep popping up as much as it does. I want it to be able to get down to sort of much lower values. You can see here, we're never really getting below 160, 170. Um, so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna change our randomizing here instead to use a curve distribution. And so what do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look. So random Z height, currently this is randomizing just linearly between zero and 200. Every value has an equal weighting equal chance of getting 0 is to 200, is to 50, is to 150, etc. Every value within this range is equally likely. Um, but if I use a, a curve to do this, so float from curve, I can control how likely each of the values are. Um, and so curves are often used for animation, that's fine, but in this case we're using it for uh, kind of distribution of random values. And so if I change the index here, this is how we are looking up the values in this curve. Instead of using the particle's age, we're just going to use a random value. 
random value between zero and one, make sure we set this every frame because it wants to be sort of updating. <clears throat> and I'm gonna change this scale to 200. Now, it's a different layout, it's a different template, it's a different way of, of calculating the values. But because this is a linear curve from zero to one, hopefully you can see this is exactly the same as we had before. Every value within this is going to be equally likely between zero and 200. So we're effectively we're randomizing between zero and 200 with a linear distribution. Um, so this value gets randomized. If we get to say, for example, 0.5, we'll go along here, 0.5, and we'll look up the value there, which will turn out to be, in this case, 0.5 and then we can scale that by 200 and so we'd get 100. So um, the powerful thing we've got now is we can control this curve. So if I were to example do this distribution, now the values in the middle are much more likely than the values at the top. And that's gonna have made some difference. A bit tricky to see, um, but if we really push this and let's say we'll put this to 0 0.50 and we'll do one, one, and let's maybe do 0.9, really push this. So now our distribution, 90% of the time when we create a random value, we're just gonna get a value of zero. So any values that get randomized here between zero and 0 0.9 are just gonna look up a value of zero, zero to 200 is zero. And so that fading is not gonna, um, or that, that sort of, not fading, the opposite, the, the pushing upwards, the setting the high watermark is not gonna do anything 90% of the time. Um, and then only in that final 10% do we get a value. And obviously we can adjust the tangents to this and we can do anything we like with the sort of curve editor. And we can see now in this distribution in the preview here, most of the time it fades all the way down to low numbers. And then every so often it pops up. And obviously with the randomness, it's very, very possible to get two high values next to each other. So occasionally we get kind of like some big pops. Um, and you can do all of this. You can control this however you like. Uh, so a nice way of um, controlling the random dis in the distribution to get different results to this uh, to this system. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, that's the fade over time node. Um, setting a target value. If the target value is higher than the current value, then you'll set it up. If it's not, well, then we just carry on fading using the fade values we set up here. Um, Make sure that your target value isn't always at the maximum, isn't always above. Um, so without randomizing it here, it's just going to randomize and set a value. Um, very common uh, mistake to make. Um, debugging, I love doing this. Actually see the values that you're looking at. Yes, there are things like the attribute spreadsheet. Um, if I do debug attribute spreadsheet capture, you can see you can also capture the value that way. Uh, it's not quite frame accurate, I guess, because it's not quite the same value there. Um, but it's a much more uh, in-depth way of getting values. There's lots and lots of information in here. I don't want lots of information. I want one very specific piece of information. So I just stick a material on and have a look at that one specific piece of information, um, which I think works quite nicely. Um, I lost my real time update because I've got the attribute spreadsheet open. Sure. Anyway, um, there we go. And then the other thing we looked at was the random distributions um, using a curve to look up values. So randomizing down here rather than actually directly in the float gives us the ability to control this. And like I say, we can do all sorts with this. Um, any curve values we want, we have very high probability of a low number. Um, well, that's, yeah, not how that works. Uh, that's very high probability of high numbers up here and here, and then low numbers there. Um, but yeah, all sorts of things you can do with these curves, um, depending on the result that you're trying to get. Cool, all right. Any questions, comments, or um, feedback, please do let me know. Um, if you wanna learn more about Niagara, if you want to learn more about Niagara, please uh, do check out my courses on Gumroad and Udemy. Um, there's going to be some new content coming soon, hopefully. Um, or if you want to support the channel directly, there is a Patreon link below. And big thanks to all my patrons for doing so. Um, and yeah, hopefully you find this helpful and I will see you all next time.